Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Daily Thread. So good to be here. I want to give a big shout out to our friends at Sensible Marketing. Good times once again on my back. It's always good times when we're talking about Sensible Marketing. Our friends, Shimmy, Jeremy, Ron, and the entire team at Sensible, they are the best in nursing home marketing. They are experts in the field. So make sure you reach out to Sensible Marketing and SensibleMarketing.com. There's nobody else you need to call. You need to reach out to Sensible Marketing today. And good times to come. If I had a shirt like that, okay, so I would wear it too, by the way. I want you to know. Oh, okay. So I guess we're going to have to get you a sweatshirt oh, well, like this. I, I'm west away from my Collins and Company shirt. So um, I guess Collins and Company was sent out first. So once Collins and Company arrives, um, then I'll. Why are you calling? One second. Why are you calling in Collins and Company? Collins and Co. It's Collins and Co. Co. Co stands for the word, is an abbreviation for company. I know, but that's such a that's such like an old thing to do is to call it collars and company. I'm helping you make your point exactly. So um, <laughs> I'm just helping you out. I'm just helping. You. Thank you. you know, they say uh, I think the author Joseph Conrad once said, "Youth is wasted on the young." I hear youth is wasted on the young. So you know, you. so you know, you have to deal with it. You have, you've got to deal with whatever you have to deal with, uh, Baruch Hashem. But. Um, yeah. Listen, I told you someone came over to me in shul after davening this morning and said to me, what, what's going on? I said, what do you mean what's going on? <laughs> hey, what's going on with you? I said, what do you mean what's going on with me? What happened? The, the paper's too light? It's 116 pages today. Let me get the paper. It's 116 pages today. It's good off-season, you know, solid uh, newspaper. No, no, no. You haven't recorded a podcast in two days. I said, oh, I didn't know anybody was counting. But um, I said, yeah. I said, listen. No, I said to the guy, I said, listen, whatever Naki says, record, I record. I didn't push him in high school, and I'm not pushing him now. <laughs> Once again, no, the truth is you, you, have, you have strep, and uh, we, we, don't, we, we wanted to give you a, a nice rest. Um, well, I appreciate the rest. Um, you know, I caught it over uh, Shavuos, uh, surrounded by uh, grandchildren, Baruch Hashem, and some adults, too, that had strep. And of course, um, I don't think I had. Yeah. I don't think I. I don't think I had strep for I don't know, thirty, forty years. I don't know how long it's been, but. Um, really. I was, you know, I so I, I took a what they call a throat culture, a strep test, whatever they call it, a uh, uh, throat culture, and um, and it came back positive to my surprise. And uh, I'm on antibiotic, and it makes you a little bit lethargic, knocks you out a little bit, but uh, it's already what four days, and uh, and also yeah. shem, you know. Uh, hanging in there. There's a lot going on. Wanna, a lot going on in the world. Yeah, I want to. I want. I want to mention something interesting I saw uh, last night, or actually, it perhaps was this morning. I don't. I don't even remember. But, um, okay. So, so this is a, a tweet from Hillel Fold. Okay. Uh, you know the sure. the brother the bro- brother of Ari Fold Alva Shalom, yes. but like the tech the tech whiz who lives in Eretz Right. So he writes, my, my cousin's kid uh, is getting married tonight. I think he, he put this last night. I'm at the wedding, minding my own business, and I see the bride's dad, Richard Cohn. Mm-hmm. So naturally, I introduced myself, and I said, Mazel Tov. Only later did my mother nonchalantly mention that Richard Cohn, the guy who he just spoke to, mm-hmm. is, the invent- is the inventor of the PDF. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the PDF file, this guy invented it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I went – I went, I went back over and I said, once upon a time, if I'd met a celebrity, I'd ask for an autograph. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm told today all the cool kids asked for a selfie. So he took a selfie with mm-hmm. him. Um, in case his mind wasn't blow enough, uh, the guy said to him, aren't you the famous tech guy from Israel? So Hillel Fold was completely starstruck that this guy who mm-hmm. invented the thing that we use every single day, PDF, right. knew him. Mm-hmm. Um, and, then, and then Hillel said to him, is it accurate to say that you invented the PDF? And he replied, I don't like saying that about myself. We had, there, there was a team. So Hillel said, can I say it though? And he smiled. So lo and behold, who knew this from, from, this from guy, Richard Cohn, invented PDF. There's a guy here in the five towns who invented Adobe. You know that? Um, no way. Yeah. Um, uh, um, I, I don't remember his first name, so I'm not going to say. I know his last name. Uh, I don't remember his first name, but he lives in Cedarhurst. And um, – and uh, he, you know, he, he, he worked with he worked with a team also. He didn't work in a. In a- can I can I can I fact check that? Yeah, sure. You want you want to look it up now? It says, Who invented Adobe? It says, it says, it says on Wikipedia. Yeah. It was originally called Adobe Systems. Uh, it was 
who founded it who founded it one second the company was started the, the company was started in john warnock's garage okay okay and i'm gonna fact check uh, by the way pdf while you're doing that okay <laughs> if you don't mind if you don't mind what's that I, i'm just saying does john warnock live in no no his name isn't warnock okay so he was on the adobe team i'm not saying the other guy you know, uh, penciled it out in his uh, in his kitchen. You know, like where I'm sitting right yeah. now. PDF inventor, PDF inventor. Let's see, PDF inventor is. Hmm. 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 Okay, PDF. Hmm. Uh, he doesn't even give me. He gives me inventory. He doesn't even mention inventor. Okay. Anyway. We'll do that some other time. We'll do that in our own time. We'll do a little uh, off. Oh, came out. It came out inventory I'm... instead of inventor. Added a Y. PDF inventor. Okay. Uh, oh, John Warnock. Yeah, right. I said that's Adobe. Oh, oh, no, I, I'm sorry. Right, he's Adobe's co-founder, John Warnock. Uh, PDF. How about the, the other? One second. Video. How about the other? The other co-founder of of Adobe was Charles. Gesche, G E S C H K E. Is that someone who you knew? No, no, no. Who's who's the guy? Who's the guy you're talking I'm about? I'm not going to say. I will tell you. I will tell. You, I will check it out, and I will tell you next time. Okay. Okay. Oh, I know. He he got he got all the royalty checks. <laughs> for, Are you sure for Adobe? I mean, I'll I'll, I'll check it out. Okay, I'll, I will check it out. There's uh, listen. Where does John Warnock live? By the way, in Silicon Valley. Where's he from? He's in California, yeah. Okay, so listen, there's, there's a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of whiz kids um, uh, out in California. Uh, I just what's that? But I I just I just I just googled oh, Richard oh. Cohn. Um, what happened? I got mud all over the floor here. <laughs> oh my god! From, from being outside. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, can you, can you stop for a minute? I gotta clean it up. I am. I think I need to keep this in. All right, I'm gonna clean the floor while you're talking. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not gonna. I, I wish I could come there and clean the, the clean the floor for you. Listen, you know, if you're gonna keep this in, then people are gonna know the floor was muddy in the first place. <laughs> and that def and that defeats the purpose of cleaning it. Well, listen, it looks. Uh, I, it, I don't know. When did it rain last? Why is it so muddy outside? This is crazy. Oh my God! What this looks like? <laughs> oh my God! You know what? I think I stepped in a in a, in a flower pot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need a mop now. I think I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna need a mop. <laughs> I'm gonna have to mop it up. I think. What happened? I I was outside in the backyard trying to set up a nice. A nice uh, setting for you for the for the broadcast, oh and uh, you said no. There's too, there's too many birds outside making sounds. Uh, I said to you. So you're blaming you're blaming you're blaming the floor on me now. So I'm saying I was saying to you that I think that the uh, the birds the sounds of birds in the background is natural. It sounds nice. You said no. People don't want to hear birds on podcast. They'd rather see me washing the floor. I guess right. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you were going to have to come inside eventually, and you were going to, you know. All right. We're making progress here. Just keep going. Okay. So um, I'm glad that we got the mud cleaned up. Or either you got the mud cleaned up or you got kicked out of the kitchen. One of the two. Well, both. Um, the MLB is having an issue right now. They are trying to have pride night throughout the MLB, and players players are just not having it. Players don't want it. So this is a tweet from Robbie Starbuck. He says, I can confirm a big group of MLB players will refuse to wear pride or trans flags of any kind this year if asked by their teams. This includes star players. A few strong men taking a stand is, is leading others to as well. Courage is contagious. Um, I have to so tell you, Nahi, the, 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 the fascinating thing about the subject of pride, which seems to dominate the news, I don't know if I discussed it with you here. Or I discussed it with somebody else in my office this week. But you're talking about such a tiny percentage of the population. Uh, it belongs to those communities. But they dominate the news cycle. They dominate the news. Yeah, no, I, 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 have, I have to tell you why. There's a reason why. 
because this is what the news directors and the station owners believe uh, draws people to watch their stations. At the end of the day, it's not about pride or schmide or pride or, or ride. It's about who could get more viewers to watch uh, their news program or uh, whatever programming it is. And if this is what people want to watch, even though they're not involved in it, they just want to hear about it, uh, this is what they're going to give you. So you would think if you if you fell off a planet and came into to the United States of America and you said what percentage of uh, of, uh, of people are uh, belong to the so called pride community oh people I would say uh, thirty to forty percent of the population you know probably one hundred and fifty million people it's not it's a tiny it's a tiny fraction of one percent uh, it's 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 yeah. it's infinitesimal it's tiny it's insignificant that's a good word infinitesimal. But it's insignificant, uh, but it dominates the, the, the news cycle and spaces in our newspapers yeah. and uh, and so on. And um, that's just uh, that's just the way it is. You know what? I had TV on last night, actually, and uh, I was watching a Met game on my iPad. Um, but um, your mother was watching some of these uh, FBI shows on, on TV, and um, I, I wasn't focused on that. But all I heard was shooting. <laughs> All I heard was some machine guns shooting from like uh, nine o'clock to eleven o'clock. I said to myself, "No wonder there's so many shootings in the United States. Every show is about people killing each other with AR-15s, with the rapid fire machine yeah. guns. You see that on a steady basis on a, a, every single night. Of course, if you have a problem with somebody somewhere, if they stepped on your foot or they didn't, or they took your parking space. Of course, you're gonna go get and uh, get go get a machine gun and shoot them." Of course, that's that that that's what we're teaching the 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 population, very impressionable people. Anyway, yeah. Anyways, um, we'll see what happens on that front, and I, I totally agree with you on that. I mean, like you reap you you reap what you sow. Um, no, a lot, a lot, another thing course, is one second. A lot of the ball players are religious. They're religious. They're religious Christians. A lot of the ball players. They are. They're, they're they are. Bible. They they're Bible believing Christians. They come from Bible believing states. They're from Oklahoma. They're from Texas. Uh, they, they're not from New York or California. They, they don't. They're not. They don't. They don't take this garbage. Anyway, what, what yeah. else do you want to say? Ami Hirsch, senior rabbi at the Free Synagogue, right. Uh, right. he had something to say about. He, he tweeted, which at this point has sixty-seven thousand people saw this, so it's nineteen hours. It's going viral. I think it's worth for us to talk about. He tweeted, I fear that we are losing the soul of the reform movement. Here and now is the place and time to have the urgent conversation that will shape the future of our movement. Hashtag recharging reform, and here's what he had to say. I fear that we are losing the soul of the reform movement to turn against Israel, to join our ideological opponents and political enemies in castigating Zionism is a sign of Jewish illness. <laughs> An atrophying of our intellectual and com emotional <clears throat> commitment to our people, given the growing hostility to Israel in our circles, liberal and progressive spaces, and mindful of the increasing disdain for Jewish particularism, it's not enough for us to proclaim our Zionist bona fides every now and again, often expressed defensively, with so many qualifications, stipulations, and modifications that our enthusiasm for Zionism is buried under an avalanche of provisos. It's not enough for us to issue occasional press releases, or tweets that we are a Zionist movement committed to the age-old religious value of the covenant of the Jewish people. We are the leaders. We must lead. We must be proactive. And sooner or later, we will have to attend to the growing fissures in the reform movement itself. We cannot pretend that they do not exist for the sake of a false sense of unity. Otherwise, the rifts that emerged between the anti-peoplehood, anti-Zionist reformed Jews of the first half of the 20th century and the Zionists who were committed to Jewish particularism will reopen in our movement with devastating consequences for 21st century reform synagogues. If the North American reform 
movement, by word or by deed, by action or silence, becomes in fact or even in perception an anti-Zionist, anti-particularist movement that cares only or mostly about universal concerns, unanchored in and unmoored from the centrality of Jewish peoplehood. If this happens, most American Jews will abandon us. Okay, well... No, um, listen, there's a lot to say about that. I, I haven't heard him speak before. I've read about him. He's a, a reform rabbi in the city of Manhattan. Uh, very leftist. Yeah. He almost sounds. If you close your eyes, he almost sounds like Mayor Kahana. Uh, what he's what he's saying, but but you know, but whatever. Don't, don't close your eyes. Whatever whatever he's saying though is the fault of the reform movement because they're losing. They're not only losing the support for Israel in the reform movement. They're losing people that are members of reform temples around the world because the next stop after that is they 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 preside over intermarriages. Uh, they have yeah. they have uh, people that come from Jewish homes with uh, Christmas trees and baptizing their children uh, and just not observing anything. So it's really, it's, it's, it's really their own fault, you know, by the way. But is the reform, is the, I mean, like it, how strong is the reform movement? No, it, he, he's right. He's right that it's, he's right that it's dwindling. Uh, it's dwindling. Most, because, most Jews are, because a lot of the, most Jews are unaffiliated. They, they're not affiliated with yeah. Orthodox conservative or reform. They're just, they're just nothing. If you, I was once in a, I was once with a Chabad rabbi in Florida, in Tampa, at a supermarket, and it was a kid in front of us, and the rabbi was dressed, you know, like a Chabad chassid, and he says to the kid in front of us, uh, "Are you Jewish?" Me? No, my parents are, not me. You know, so yeah. so I mean, that's what they're teaching uh, their the the people, their their young people, that it, it's okay to be nothing, uh, uh, basically. You know, let me tell you something about what's going on this weekend, because uh, it's been a couple of days since we spoke. Um, you know, this Sunday is a salute to Israel Day parade on Fifth Avenue um, in Manhattan. Okay. Okay, and it's also a uh, a a conference in a nearby hotel sponsored by Aritz Sheva. Okay, and there's going to be and and Prime Minister and there's going to be 16 members of the Knesset coming into New York to be part of the parade and of the uh, the conference the news conference. And Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday said that he advises them not to go to New York because in in the past, by the Israel Day Parade, you'll see a couple of blocks away on a corner surrounded by police in the Turek Karta. You'll see 20 or 30 people that look like they're Hasidim, but they're in the Turek Karta, and they're, you know, they're emotionally damaged people that are against the state of Israel. But this year, right. they're being joined by uh, Jewish leftists, nothing to do with religion. The Jewish leftists to protest to demonstrate against Israel. So you might have, I don't, know, I don't know, I don't think you're going to have thousands of people, but you might have a thousand people demonstrating uh, against Israel uh, near near the parades. So um, you know that could cause a, a lot of a lot of tension. But the world loves to see Jews uh, protesting against Jews. That's like a that's like a gift that never stops giving. You can almost tie that with a with a bow and and, and present it to them with a balloon. But uh, that's what we're looking. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking at uh, this Sunday uh, in Manhattan. You have ethnic groups having parades on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan almost every week, and no one says anything about it. All of a sudden, you have a salute to Israel Day parade with schools and yeshivas and colleges and uh, all kinds of organizations are going to be marching, and you're going to have to have intense. Uh, Police protection, um, you know, uh, uh, from every angle. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, okay, what else? What else you got for today? What else do I have for today? Well, it's a very busy week next week uh, in New York on the dinner calendar. Um, on Monday night, uh, there's a dinner in, in the city for um, the Israel ambassador to the United Nations, uh, Gilad Erdan, uh, and. Nice. Um, and also, I'm not going to tell you where the dinner is because it's a private dinner, only about 60 or 70 people. But they hired about a half a dozen security people. Uh, they usually hire nobody. Usually have one or two people. Of course, the ambassador comes with his own security team. But in addition to that, they hired security people. And then Tuesday night at Cipriani is uh, Ellie Bear's uh, United uh, Hatsala. And they're going to be, be nice. yeah, they're going to be honoring uh, Robert Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots. Uh, a big, a major philanthropist, 
supports a lot of uh, major Jewish organizations, uh, does uh, great uh, philanthropy, uh, as, I, uh, as I just said, and he'll be the keynote speaker amongst uh, the honorees. Um, they're going to have also a lot of security there. That's at Cipriani's, you know, that's been advertised all over the place. So it's on Wall Street. So, uh, you know, where, where that is. And uh, other than that, um, I think, um, basically, I think we touched on the uh, important parts uh, uh, of the news that uh, that Hirsch, uh, that Amiel Hirsch speech was uh, was very interesting, but they, they are losing their people uh, because of, uh, basically because of lack of education and intermarriage, I think, uh, essentially. So they really have to look uh, inwardly. And you know what? It's his people that are Jews that support dividing Jerusalem and that support creating a Palestinian state. They think that's the solution to the problem, but that's not the solution to the problems. Right. That's the beginning of a whole new set of problems. Anyway, that's yeah. basically it. Anyways, yeah, that's our episode for today of The Daily Thread. Thank you so much for listening. If you see my father in the street, just make sure to tell him, like, why aren't you recording more? And Mir Shem, his antibiotics should be kicking in and his strep will be gone. And we'll be recording more episodes. I have to go change. Until I have then, to go change my shoes now too. Oh gosh! Good luck to you. Until then, have a great, great weekend, everybody. See you. Okay, be well.